so many times a lot of women they find themselves in abusive relationships and they stay for their children i've had a lot of people who be like i'm going to norway i will stay here for my children if if this man is abusing me today i've been blessed to be with the doctor <laughs> i call it the doc <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Messi Manyema, she's a Christian counselor and we've invited her here today so that she can talk to us and tell us the effects and why people stay in abusive relationships. Thank you, doctor, for coming. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. It's my utmost privilege. Thank you so much. We are very honored to have you. Um it's good when we have people who, who went to school when they come, <laughs> when they come to talk to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we can start on why do people stay in abusive relationships? I think that question is the most asked question when we talk about abuse in relationships. Whether it is um a marriage or just a, a, a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at it on the outside, it doesn't make sense, right, to stay with someone who is beating you or who is um, controlling you or who is causing you pain. Um, I think the first factor that I can highlight is fear. Mm. Sometimes a woman, it, it happens both ways, mm -hmm. um, but the rates of women being abused by men higher than men being abused by women. <coughs> Excuse me, but it can happen both ways. So fear is one big factor. Fear of what? Number one, fear of the unknown. Mm. Uh, a woman might not know what will happen to her when she leaves this relationship. If it's a marriage, uh, wh where will she live? Mm. How will she look after herself, her children, etc.? I'll talk about the finances a little bit later. Sometimes um, she's been threatened She's been threatened. A man or a partner can tell you, if you dare to leave me, I'll kill you. Mm. If I can't have you, no one else can. Mm. Sometimes it's also fear uh, of what people will say. What will people say? So I think that's one big factor of why people stay. Um, the other factor I can mention is that abuse by its nature is manipulative. Mm. It's about power mm. and control. Mm. And when you've been in that situation for a while, you it's almost like your ability to see yourself on your own is taken away. Mm. And so sometimes women cannot even envision themselves living apart from this person. And it, it's like, this is my reality. This is where I am. Mm. There's also the role of society. Those of us who are around uh, women who are being abused, who are told these things, they are our family members or they are our friends. The stigma mm -hmm. that single women have to face, single mothers have to face. And unfortunately, I, I like to mention this so that we are aware. Sometimes even in communities where we expect safety, like a church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do stigmatize women who have left their marriages. We um, portray them as damaged or they were difficult. Mm -hmm. There's no way a man could have stayed with her, mm -hmm. the way she talks, the way she is, or, or whatever it is. So sometimes that stigma is what makes people stay mm -hmm. it, because it's hard to deal with. Financial issues are also another big reason. Um, I don't know whether... Um, this is calculated or whatever, but in quite a number of a big proportion of romantic relationships or marriages, the woman will tend to earn less mm. or not earn anything at all. Mm. And so when she's, she finds herself in an abusive relationship, the issue of finances is a big one, mm, which true. is where I guess um, the point you were talking about of um, I'll stay for my children. Mm. I'm going to stay for my children. The mm. reason why women will say that is they want their kids to go to school. Mm. The same school that they've grown up knowing, mm. right? If they've been going to Crawford, they want their child to continue at Crawford. Mm. Um, where am I going to live? Can I afford this lifestyle? Can I afford my own medical care? And there are some abusers who will systematically make sure that this woman has no financial agency mm. at all. They will take 
everything into their control mm. such that for a woman to think where am i going to go they, they will not even have enough money to say okay i'm going to rent a room for one month while mm. i figure myself out they don't mm. they really don't and it's really quite sad and um it's there's also on the other side you know when we're talking about relationships and things and we talk about men being providers mm. and and sometimes how we portray a relationship and say if a man is a real man he must provide for me mm. sometimes i think as women we shoot ourselves in the foot mm. because then you get into this relationship where you have no means of Income. you're not yeah mm. you're not contributing anything mm. into this relationship mm. um it's only the man who's doing this and mm. if you end up with somebody who's manipulative and controlling and abusive then you are um, it's going to be very hard to leave i also think that the economy i don't know how it works but the economy or is it like in the corporate world men they tend they really they and more yes so it's it's like yes. the white people then you have the color then you have the black <laughs> then all the blacks the black men they are here then the women are a law i don't know maybe it's a, is, is it an african problem because i see the the ladies in in the europe in the west they move out of relationships they don't stay because maybe they are financially well i don't know um i think the issue of women earning less than men is across the board. Mm. Uh, I remember years ago when um you know the the uh, Wimbledon tennis tournament. Mm. I remember there was a whole uh thing going on in the news when the female tennis players realized, I don't know whether they realized it then or they were fighting that their prize money when they win mm. or whatever money that they're given in that tournament is less than mm, for men than for male players so that particular um, issue is across the board mm. but i do think our culture might have something to do with that mm. because mm. there is kind of an expectation that a woman would be staying more at home mm. which is not a problem i mean mm. i don't have a problem with that staying at home with your children i do think that uh being a mother and staying to be with your children at home or choosing to be a stay at home mother should not take away your financial agency mm. and there are ways that couples and families can run their finances in such a way that a woman still has decision making power uh, i think in general society has tended to look down on the role of mothering and taking care of our children because nobody pays you for that mm. at the end of the month nobody says here mm. is some money for what you've been doing mm. right and so perhaps it's a case of women choosing to do uh, really what is part of their role as being women and then inadvertently being punished for it mm. because if you're going to take some time out of your career 7 mm. to 10 years to look after your children you will if there are two women in 2023 mm. um one has children one doesn't mm. or both have children and one chooses to keep going to work and the other one chooses to stay mm. it goes without saying that the one who chooses to continue going to work might be a little bit further the one than one who stays um and that's unfortunate that's quite unfortunate and so when you then bring in abuse into that kind of scenario it's it's a case of a person taking advantage of that mm. it's a person taking advantage mm. of that and it's very sad that now we end up looking down on being a stay at home mother uh, or being a housewife it's looked down on because you know of all these dynamics that um that come into play mm. um i think also the other reason that women may stay is that because abuse is about manipulation and control um particularly with men who have narcissistic traits mm. they would do something to you let's say he beats you and then tomorrow you'll be so remorseful they apologize oh my lord very good they at apology they would be so remorseful mm. they'll buy you something mm. um i remember reading a story somewhere of a woman who could open her cupboard where she kept her clothes mm. and identify for each dress this is when he did this this is when he did this this is when he did this hey. this is when he did this so they buy you stuff honey i'm so sorry i'll never do that again 
I was um, really upset. It was very stressful at work. And you understand because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Mm. In a loving relationship. Mm. Um, so you get caught in this cycle and you keep believing that it's going to get better. Mm. And I don't think that hope is wrong. What's wrong is that this person keeps taking advantage of it. Because often you then find us who are looking on the outside saying to this woman, but why do you keep believing him? Mm. But should a spouse not believe their spouse? Should we not? We should. Should we not forgive our spouses? We should. We really should. The issue is that there is one person who is taking advantage, advantage. Mm. of that. So you get caught up now in this cycle. And sometimes in this cycle... This person gaslights you. Mm -hmm. They gaslight you. They say, that's not what I meant. You're overreacting. You're being too sensitive. Mm. And so uh, uh, a person who's being abused can end up blaming themselves for their husband's behavior. And often we do it too. I actually remember a conversation I had once with somebody who was telling me that they had been beaten. Mm the first question that rolled off my tongue was, what did you do? Mm. It was so unconscious. Mm. But as soon as I said it, and I saw the look on her face, mm. I realized, oh no. That is not a question we should ask a person who's being abused. What did you do? Maybe we should say what happened. Mm. Mm. Because when, you say, when we keep saying, what did you do? Yep. We validate the fact that his behavior is because of you. Mm. Mm. And I mean, the truth is we do very hurtful things to each other in relationships and in marriages. Sometimes we do very dumb things also mm. to each other that you can look back on and say, wow, what was I even thinking when I did that? Mm. But that person has a choice of how to react to that dumb thing that you have done. And it's not everyone who experiences hurt, who chooses to abuse in mm. return. Abuse is always a choice. Always a choice. So even if you're experiencing challenges in your marriage, let's say you're not the neatest person or you are, your husband seems to be neater than you, mm. okay? Or your husband keeps time better than you. Or your husband... I don't know, whatever other differences that can come up in a marriage or in a relationship, that does not justify a person abusing you. Mm. Or let's say you have different spending patterns, mm. right? You have different spending patterns. There, there are some people who um, are very frugal, mm. very, very frugal. Mm. And there are some people who, um, not that they're careless, but they, they are more Impulsive. likely... <laughs> some are very impulsive but mm. then there, there are other people who are more likely to say you know what let's enjoy today mm. let's get a little something mm. and perhaps your partner is not like that that's not a reason for them to financially abuse you to then start controlling everything and, and not give you access to anything mm. there are better ways of dealing with differences mm. and I'm raising this because many women carry the burden of shame for their abuse mm. they blame themselves for their partner's behaviors. There are, um, I think there's four things, I can only remember three at the moment, that you cannot control about another person. Their behavior, their attitude, mm -hmm. their thoughts. You can't control those. You can influence them, uh, as, as are we. You can influence the way I think about something. But ultimately, I've got to choose that this is the way I view this. You can influence me right now to say, okay, as soon as we get up from here, um, let's go for an ice cream. Mm. You know, and you can, you can um, coerce me, etc., etc., etc. But at the end of the day, I've got to decide. I have to make a decision. So abuse is always a choice by one person to exert control over another, no matter what you have done. Mm. This is not to condone treating each other badly. Right, disrespecting each other or being rude to one another. We've often heard that um, if you're disrespectful to a man, you drive him to beat you. Mm. There's something to be said about disrespect 
you know, um, making a person angry. That's all right. But a person will have to choose what they do with that anger. We all do. Mm. We all do. And, and many times women carry this burden. And so they don't leave. Mm. They don't leave. Uh, our culture sometimes also plays into this in that it normalizes certain things. So if, if you and your partner are living in a nice house, mm. a house that you have bought, no less, right? And your children are going to a good school. You can buy enough groceries for your family every month. Mm. And yeah, you're driving a car. Um, and I mean, he cheats maybe, mm. but none of the women have ever come into your house. None mm. of them call you, you know, and I go and tell one of my relatives mm. that I'm being abused. They will ask me all those questions and then they'll tick certain boxes mm. and then they'll say, ah, so what's the problem? Yes. It's normal. Men, they all cheat. Yeah. Hmm. What is the problem? I actually might get a good talking to. Like you are the problem. Yes. You are the, pro you are the women who are problematic. Hmm. What are you expecting from this man? No one is perfect. Mm. And then they'll start to point at each other. Mm. You see me? I was beaten for years. Fish. But I'm still here. Mm. So sometimes our culture will normalize certain things. And we end up almost gaslighting each other as women. To say, no man, that's not abuse. That's normal. And there's also... I was quite surprised to realize that it's still there even now. I, I mean, I was in my 20s like 20 years ago. And back then, it was said that if a guy, even a guy who's just dating you, mm -hmm. if he beats you, mm -hmm. it means he loves you. Hey. <laughs> you heard that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apparently, it's still being said even now. That a man has got to be a little jealous of you. Jealous enough to do something to you to know that he really loves you. Like he, it means he doesn't want to share you with anyone else. Mm. I've, I've always spoken to men, like to the male, to, me, to the males. And I've told, asked them, you guys have got your own car. Like if, a very beautiful BMW that is outside there. Mm. You love it. Because you love it, would you take like a knife and stab <laughs> them, the, the tires? Because you love it. You can take a stone yeah. and yeah. destroy the windscreen because yeah. you love it. That's what they are doing to women. Do you yeah. do you hit your woman mm. when you love her? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Mm. It really is crazy. I remember when I was um I think I must have been 17 and I was in hospital to get my appendix removed. And on the bed next to me was this other young lady. I think she was like 20 because she was in college. Mm. Um, she was about 20 and she was in hospital because her ankle had dislocated mm. because her boyfriend kicked her. Oh. And I remember I was like 17, but I remember thinking, ah, ah, man, this is wrong. That doesn't sound right. And guess what? Mm. Two days after... She, had, she needed to have like a, a um, procedure mm. to, to realign. And two days after this guy came back, came to visit her, and she accepted him. Yeah, no, no, he's really sorry. He's such ah. a sweet guy. I remember thinking to myself, ah, oh, man, I don't know if that is, I don't know if that is right. Because now my problem is if he's kicking you now when you are girlfriend right? and boyfriend. Right. Marriage is hard. You know, marriage is Enough. hard. So it's going to put him it's so much pressure and he's going to kill you. <laughs> he's not going to kick you. And I think it's we should kick. just mention that right here, mm. particularly to the young, to the young generation. Mm. Love is not supposed to hurt. Mm. Love does not hurt. Love has challenges. Because you are two individuals, right? Raised in different backgrounds. So you, you are going to have conflict and you're going to need to negotiate. No, I don't like this. You like that. This is how I see the world. This is how you see the world. In fact, that is the purpose of dating. The purpose of dating is not to change someone. 
is to see if somebody somebody's values, their direction in life, how they view life aligns with yours. Um, as per key values that drive your life, right? Things like your spirituality, your religion, your purpose in life, uh, you know, what you think about children, etc., etc., etc. You're trying to find someone who aligns with you so that you can decide whether you're going to share the rest of your life with them. Mm. And if you find out that one of those pillars is not aligning and this person can disrespect you enough to beat you mm. before they've made a commitment to you, mm. run. Move. Oh. Run for your mm. life. A person can say, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to change. That's fine. Can we go our separate ways? Mm. You go do what you need to do. Mm. And let's see if we meet again. Because also, women, I think because we are nurturers, ne? we can get sucked into, you know, you're the best thing that has happened to me. And when I'm with you, I'm a better man. Mm. So you stay because he makes you believe when he's with you, he's going to get better. Mm. Listen particularly if you're not married yet, mm. if he wants to change for you, he will change. It's better to put distance. Mm. Let him do the work he needs to do. Mm. Go for counseling. Get accountable with people. Mm. Do what he needs to do. And then he must come and show that he has changed. It's not our responsibility. Particularly if there's no commitment yet. It's not your responsibility to help this guy change. Uh -uh. Mm. No. Because then, remember this cycle, we were talking about this cycle of, of abuse. If you're already in a marriage, you still need to understand that you're not responsible for his behavior. But there's something to be said about giving him uh, the space and the grace he needs to work on it because you're already in the relationship. Mm. So you will need help to, to find ways to cope and keep your safety, your emotional, psychological safety while he's doing the work he needs to do, right? You need help to do that. And, and so you can wait for him. But if there's no commitment yet, that can be dangerous. Mm. That can really be dangerous. If you are married, it's important that you get help. It is really important that you get help because abuse tends to eat away at your self-esteem. It can change Eish. the way you view yourself and the way you view the world. Mm. And so you need someone who's going to give you correct perspective, who's going to say to you, nah, ah, girl, that's not right. That's not true. That's not okay. Because the thing with abuse, and, and I guess we can um, now transition into the impact mm. of abuse. The thing with abuse is that you, this person starts doing these things to you, right? And we often derive our sense of self and our self-worth from how people treat us, mm. which is why if you are walking down the road and you meet a stranger and they spit into your face, oh. how do you feel? You see exactly how you reacted. Mm. How do you feel about yourself? Hey, it means that maybe I'm not dressed well. Maybe. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You ask yourself, what's wrong with me? Mm. Why would he pick me mm. to do something like that? Mm. So if you're living with a person who is constantly telling you that you are stupid, you are ugly. clumsy, you are ugly, mm. you're good for nothing, you cannot live without me, who do you think you are? Hey. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have this and mm. that. So what happens is you absorb. Mm. You absorb that messaging. And then you start telling it to yourself. Mm. I think that's the most dangerous thing about abuse is that it's almost like this person is singing this song to you, this tune, these lyrics. And at the beginning, it's his song that mm. he's singing to you. But then you start singing it too. And you start singing it to yourself. Mm. And they say the person you are with the most is yourself. So the things you say to yourself change your life. So abuse can change how you view yourself, your sense of self, how you view the world. You can become very pessimistic about the world. 
In fact, there's a concept they call learned helplessness mm. that can happen in abuse, where mm. you start believing there's nothing I can do. Mm. So you're talking to this person who is in an abusive situation, and they keep saying, I don't know what to do. I don't think there's anything I can uh, do. And there's no one who's going to help anyway. Mm. So it's like this. We just stay like that. It's my fate. Mm. I mean, I chose this guy anyway. Mm. Or I saw the red flags and I ignored them. Mm. So there's nothing that I can do. I think that is the most harmful thing about abuse is that it literally changes your thought patterns, the way you think. And mm. if you have children, that can then spill over into the children. Because if you have low self-esteem, it's going to be hard for you to pass <laughs> healthy self-esteem to your children. It's going to be very hard. And the statement that I'm staying for my children, our children are very perceptive. Mm. Yeah, they know. They can see what's going on mm -hmm. from quite a young age. Mm -hmm. They can see that it's not okay mm -hmm. from quite a young age. So when you stay, what can happen is that your sons can start to believe that it's okay to treat women that way. <sighs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. And your daughters can start to believe that that's how it is. That's the lot of women. If I meet a guy and he knocks me around a little bit, I mean, my mom took it. Mm. So I can take it too. And the reason why that happens is that we are our children's first role models. We are our children's first role models. So whether we like it or not, they are going to learn something and make certain conclusions from the way we live life the things we say, the things we do, and our perspectives. It, it's, we cannot run away from it. So it's not whether your child is going to emulate you or not. Mm -hmm. It's just being intentional about what we are allowing them to see. So at some point you have to ask yourself, is it better for my children to have the good school but have unhealthy um, ways of looking at the opposite gender, or can we downscale down a little bit, mm. but live in a safe, nonviolent mm. environment? Because it also has an impact on 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 the on their minds. Yes, when they see daddy and mommy fighting over and over, that like, is so true. Mm. That is so true. So there's a study that. Um, was done in the United States years ago, I think in the 90s. And it's been replicated in many places, including South Africa. Um, in fact, it's the study I did for, for my PhD. Mm. And we were looking at all these traumatic experiences that children go through and how they can impact their lives later on. And there are several ones, physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, emotional abuse. And one of the other, one of the factors we looked at was uh, living with someone with mental illness in the house and witnessing domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And witnessing domestic violence on its own, mm. on its own, can increase the risk of a child having depression when they are older, um, attempting suicide when they are older, drug abuse risk when they are older. And it's because... Domestic violence, whether it's physical violence or any other, if the two of you are fighting, there's no way you are emotionally available for your children. Mm. So by default, if there's domestic violence in the home, there's emotional neglect. Mm. And if this mother or this father is tense all the time and stressed, it's very likely that they're going to spill over that stress onto their children. So they're going to be yelling at them. Mm. It's going to be hard for them to be affirming to their children. Mm. And, and therefore, you are likely to be emotionally abusive as well to your child. So when you decide to stay, this is the risk that is involved. This is the risk that is involved. And... It's unfortunate that uh, it seems that sometimes society does not um, fully recognize abuse that leaves no marks. Mm. Because your child may, you may not physically abuse them, 
or your partner your partner may be beating you but not the children mm. so they have no physical marks mm. but they carry this burden mm. they carry also shame mm. because it's hard for a child to tell their friends at break time that so these friends are talking about oh my and then my mom did this and then my dad did and then we played this and it's like oh yeah so my dad was beating my mom last night <laughs> they may try but then the reaction they're going to get means they're going to learn no this is not something you talk about mm. and so it's almost like your kids are now in this pact of silence that they didn't ask for they didn't choose they can't openly talk about their family life because there's so much chaos and that causes shame mm. and a child grows up with this sense of shame that has nothing to do with them really mm. and shame leads into all these other and healthy coping mechanisms like drugs and alcohol and promiscuity sometimes is a coping mechanism for for what a child is carrying because of what they experienced in the home um i think uh another aspect we don't fully account for with abuse and domestic violence is your physical health mm. because our minds and our bodies are connected um your feelings your emotions the, the the structures that are responsible for that is your brain your nerves your spinal cord you know your hormones and all those are housed in this physical body mm -hmm. so anything that happens to upset your emotions is going to upset your body it is definitely going to upset your body so you find that high blood pressure mm. that can be linked to stress um diabetes also Hmm. can be linked to stress and anxiety hmm. panic attacks hmm. all those things there are people who have now been able to link stress and abuse even to autoimmune disease hmm. to allergic reactions there are people who when they're highly stressed they break out in a rash hmm. so your physical health is also going to be uh jeopardized And so that's the cost that we often don't account for when we think about staying. And I'm certainly not saying that you must just Leave. one day pack up your bags and announce I'm leaving, I'm going, I'm not staying for this. That's not um a safe way of doing it, but I think it's important to, you know, sit down and take into account what what am I paying by staying um against what I believe i'm gaining mm. it's a it's a tough conversation mm. but it's a necessary conversation mm. yeah and the granny the granny is like you say it at home because there are no marks no no marks on the children no physical marks on the mm. children they'll just stay yeah. you have to stay for your children mm. you have mm. to be there no women would leave because this is happening he yeah. loves you yeah and yet in 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 the near future you raise children who are not well in the mind you raise children who are going to abuse substances mm. and a whole lot so it's not healthy yeah no it really isn't um so i spoke also about how it it changes the way you view yourself and the mm. world and it will also affect the way you like the way you 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 view god mm. and your spirituality mm. you know the the um, the understanding that we are all created for a purpose mm. right we are all created for a purpose by an all loving god and if you're being abused every day you are going to ask yourself those questions was i created to be beaten mm. I I know of somebody who asked me why did God give me this husband? Yeah. Why did he give me this husband who mm. abuses me mm. every day? And and so sometimes you will meet people who How do I describe it? I I don't want to um, People who are very pessimistic. Mm. Um like it's hard for them to see anything good. Mm. Uh, something good might have actually happened, but they'll be like it won't even last. I don't think that will even last. 
because of the experience they are going through or that they have mm. gone through because mm. you know you ask yourself all these existential questions around so was i created to is this why god made women mm. is this why god made women is this why yeah why did he give me that husband mm. uh if he's an all loving god why does he allow this mm. and I wish we had time actually to go through that. Um, we may not. So when you're saying I'm staying for my children or uh, I don't know what people will say or uh, God hates divorce, I think that is probably a really misinterpreted text. Mm. And it has been used to guilt trip people into staying in relationships that are so damaging, so, so damaging. So while you are weighing that, think about the effect it is having on your own spirituality mm. because we can't run away from the fact that we are not only physical people, we are also emotional people, mm. right? We are also intellectual people, but we are also spiritual people. Mm. Yeah, we have all those dimensions. And all those dimensions are going to be affected mm. by staying. Mm. Um, it's going to affect your children. Particularly, particularly if the church community is not supportive when you go and ask them for help. It is going to be quite a journey for your children to be able to understand truly who God is because of what they have experienced, because it honestly won't make sense to them. Sometimes you have situations where a man is a leader in the church. He could be a pastor. He could be whatever leadership is in, in a particular church. And the moment he steps foot in the church, mm. he's an angel. Amen. Yo. Hey, we know them. <laughs> Yes, you know Brother that. so and so, mm. excuse me, and they preach so well. Mm. And they are so kind to mm. other people. And they donate. And mm. they're like, you know, uh, today I'm going to go early because I need to go and pick such and such a family and take them to church. Uh, Mr. So and so is going through a difficult time, so we are going to help them. The moment they come back home, the monsters. It, a complete monster. Mm. And that causes such turmoil in the minds of children. Mm, I remember there was this child who said, I wish we would, would just stay at church. Oh my God. Because daddy is nice at church. Yes. Mm. That's so sad. Mm. That really is sad. And remember I said that we are our, our children's first role models, mm. our children's first heroes. Mm. We are also our children's first representative of deity. Mm. So when we talk to them about God when you talk to them about a higher power, we represent that to them first mm. before they can uh, have their own relationship. Because when kids, young, mm. yeah, when kids are young, yeah, when kids are young, we teach them. Mm. And so they watch you and how you behave at home and how you're different amongst other people. And in their minds, they're like, I want nothing to do with that. I really want nothing to do with that. And so you're not only impacting your own spirituality, but you're also impacting your children's spirituality. Yeah. So how then do we help? Let's say we... Okay. Before I get to the question, there was this lady. She's a friend. She was in this unhealthy, to very toxic relationship. Mm. The husband would hit her. Mm. She would wear jackets. I remember there was this other day, she even said, can I please have a jacket? This is someone who's very close to me. Can I please have a jacket? Because I've got marks. The guy was hitting her with the mm. chair. Um, the abuse became too much. Up until she took her to jail. Then the guy came back. He apologized. He sent a cow. Africans sent mm. a cow back to the mm. family. And you see when he sends the cow, your, your family is going to gain a cow. <laughs> but the cow is not even passed out. It's not yours. You're, it's, still, it's still you who's going to continue staying with who? In that environment, mm. yeah. So the guy comes back. Ah. Uh -huh. They play happy, happy. So us as friends, we're trying to help. No, he's not good. He's not good. How can he hit you like that? Next thing, he's going to kill you. Then, ah, two minutes. People are together. We are the bad guys now. <laughs> How then do we help people in abusive... In the end, now we are the enemies. You are the bad ones. Yes. You are the bad How ones. How do we help? 
Yeah, it, it's really, I must mention that one of the things that abusers will do is to isolate a person mm. from their support network, mm. paint their support network as bad mm. and wrong. And I'm sure many of us have been in that situation where you you told a person, you know, the way you were seeing things. Mm. And then when they were all lovey-dovey, they told their partner, you see what Glory was saying? Mm. She said, you are this, you are this, you are that. Hey. And he will say, you see what I always told you? Mm. I told you she talks too much. Mm. Yeah, I told you, leave them alone. So it's a very sensitive situation, I have to admit. Um, if, I, if I would say one thing, one thing only would be be empathetic. And being empathetic is like, Someone is walking on a certain road and it's muddy, there are thorns and there are whatever. And you come up and you walk next to them mm -hmm. without asking them, how did you end up here in the first place? Did you not see there was mud? When you were walking into this mud, did you not see it? What were you thinking? Are you stupid? Mm. No. You just walk alongside them and they say, yo, this mud... My feet are sticking in it. And you say, yo, I'm so sorry. I can see it. That must be so painful. Mm. I can't even imagine. Mm. We need to create a safe space as the support network for a person to process what they are going through. A person will not leave until they are ready. It's got to be their own epiphany, their own aha moment. Mm. And they actually, research has shown that most people who live an abusive relationship successfully have tried up to seven times before. Mm. They will leave like mm. your, your friend, take them to the police, report them. They gather enough guts to do that. Mm. Report them to the police and then we hang at them, right? And the police also will say, no, mama, go and talk with your family. Mm. Don't do this. Your children are going to grow up without their father. Mm. You take it back. Women will go through that process seven times before they eventually leave. leave. So while they are going through that, they need a safe space mm. with friends and with family to process. And that's hard. I've got to be honest because some of the things you'll be thinking to yourself will be, can she not see? Mm. Like, why can't she see what we are seeing? Mm. We might think she's not, she doesn't listen that one. We talk and we agree here. Mm. And then when she gets home, she does her own thing. Mm. So now I want nothing to do with yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Because mm -mm, it's getting me into problems. Mm. Um, they need a safe space. And I would say, if a person has been in an abusive relationship for a long time, while you are being a safe space, I would also encourage them. And if necessary, pay for them to go and see a professional. Mm. Because as I said, remember, there are all these psychological effects mm. that this abuse has done to them, some of which they can't even see. Mm. So there's also um, a, a um, phenomenon called Stockholm Syndrome, where essentially you love and make excuses for your abuser. Mm. So the more you try to make them see, girlfriend, this man is not good for you. She comes up with very valid excuses mm. of why this is happening, why, why she's got to stay. So learning to empathize,